70% of the black dollar goes to luxury goods and apparel. And all we do is influence what other people buy and consume it ourselves. Or are you setting intentions before you go into that woman? Or y'all mixing toxic seeds? Or we having toxic sick babies? When you look into the genetics of black people, we all have DNA and some of it is called junk DNA. But this junk DNA is one of our biggest powers. We understood that the Jezebel spirit that they tried to showcase the black woman, but then we pimp ourselves out with that same image and celebrate it. Is that culture? People are afraid of the government. They're afraid of Project 25, but they don't know about Cosmic Cycle 25. If we are people that is sick at the root, where do we start? We need to stop and look at the culture and say, what's stopping us from growing? And the blind faith era is coming to an absolute end. I appreciate my pops for teaching me how to be a guy. From a boy to a man and ultimately back into the natural state of being into a guy. As guys, we're supposed to always move with that higher self. And I had to be able to execute it. Having knowledge is not power, the execution of knowledge is power. Knowledge makes a man unfit to be a slave. Because the only real knowledge you can get is knowledge of self. The highest level is power. The highest level is sovereignty. The highest level is higher countries. The highest level is we own our own culture. Excellence at a very high level. Appreciate it. Not eye level. Mm. A high level. I like that. It's time for a high level conversation. Yeah, we're here for another high level another conversation. Another high level conversation. 19 keys and this is a high level conversation. Tap in with the guys. Look at all these beautiful black people in here ready to change the world. Y'all the leaders of the world. This is where it happens. This is what we call real culture. That shit they put on TV ain't culture. That shit they put in the music ain't culture. This is culture. We built an entire culture of resilience, self-reliance, and revolution. Economic independence, spiritual awakening. We taught our people how to create global impact, how to fight for all of the oppressed peoples around the world, how to advocate and teach health science to people all across the planet, how to tap into the metaphysics of the cosmos, how to build industries and be industrious like Marcus Garvey in the 1920s. That's our culture, but they trick us. They control the movies and the music, and they show you a nigga. And then they show you a pimp and a criminal and a gangster and a killer. And they say, that's culture. And our brains and our minds and our wounds are so powerful, whatever we absorb, we influence the entire world with. But that ain't our culture. At least it's not a good culture. It's not a culture like Dr. Sebi when he was teaching people how to eat alkaline. It's not a culture like the Honorable Elijah Muhammad who raised up Malcolm X and the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. It's not a culture like Martin Luther King when he was out there fighting so he can strategically create change as a political action strategist. It's not a culture like Noble Drew Ali who was teaching black people who their real heritage was. That's not the culture that it represents, but every single decade on this planet since we've been out here in America, we've been the most revolutionary industrious people on this planet, and nobody can hold a bar to us. So why is not represented? Why when we go look at the Olympics and we see these magnificent, brilliant, melanated specimens out there running and breaking records, that's not our culture. But they say hip-hop is the culture. Hip-hop just an entertainment aspect of the culture. What we really do is we change the universe. What we really do is we influence because our spirit and our mind is brilliant and we conduct so much energy that the rest of the world revolves around it. I ain't here to lie to you today. I ain't here to make it sound fly. I'm here to tell you how it is. As black men, we got to stop being afraid of speaking truth. Donald Trump ain't going to make you wealthy. You will make you wealthy. 
Kamala ain't going to save you. You going to save you. And until you get that in your spirit, you're going to always need them. They supposed to need you. I need you to know what time it is. I need you to know your power. I need us to stop being the biggest consumers, but produce what we consume. By 2030, you're going to spend $70 billion on luxury goods and apparel. But do we produce the manufacturing and the cotton in which it comes from? Or are all we doing is sowing generational wealth into other families because of our insecurities? 70% of the black dollar goes to luxury goods and apparel. And all we do is influence what other people buy and consume it ourselves. The time is over for that. The time for us is to dress in ourselves. So when we dress like slaves, we're wearing brands of other people, building up their generational wealth, talking about black power. Do a damn lie. Ain't nothing powerful about that. We got to get our health right. Because you can't be a man if you ain't working out and exercising. You can't do 20 push-ups. Or you think because you got a new Tesla truck that means something? You got an AP on your wrist that means something? When somebody slapped you in your face, you can't protect yourself. Fat boy. I'm calling it out today. We understood that the Jezebel spirit that they tried to showcase the black woman and so they can do anything they wanted to her and say she wanted it. But then we pimp ourselves out with that same image and celebrate it. Is that culture? Every single one of your family and friends should have showed up today. But they didn't because they're not the chosen ones. You was chosen to be here in this time, in this space, in this place. Because it's your time. It's our time. It is a time where political reliance is going to a low. This is the RNC and the DNC. If it represents black people, it's here. And when you walk outside, the way you make yourself and the way we shape a new future is by putting the depth of knowledge and courage and virtues and values in you so that the next generation becomes a reflection of what you became. So it's past ambitions. We have to start to aspire to become more. What do we want to become? Where do we want to go? Today, we about to get rid of that ignorant, low-level conversation. And we about to have us a what? We about to have us a what? So I got some special guards in the building. Ah, uh, they don't operate in the corporate meritocracy. They don't operate within the government. They don't operate in the systems. They not afraid to dress how they want, talk how they want, speak how they want, and they still make millions. Isn't that freedom? I said, isn't that freedom? Are we a free people? We'll stop being afraid to speak like one, to think like one, to walk like one, to talk like one, to be like 19 Keys, to be like Billy Carson, to be like Yaki Awakening. To be like the God that's in you. Because when I talk to you and I see you, I'm not talking to that weak, insecure, trying to grab your confidence and manhood self. I'm talking to the God in you. And if you can't resonate with that spirit, then you're dead. We think these moments on stage is entertainment. This is a cosmic shift on the planet Earth. This is us taking back our rulership. Are y'all ready for the gods to come out? Well, the first brother I want to bring up, I believe you're very familiar with him. He goes by the name of Billy Carson. Can y'all stand on y'all feet and make some noise for the cosmic God as he comes out here? I want y'all to shake the energy up. How many people in here ever been sick? Some of y'all sick right now. I see them stomachs. It's all right. Just don't cough on nobody. But if you got an ailment, you got an issue, you got something that needs to be treated. This next brother out here is a plethora of knowledge. This brother can go backwards and forward in time of recorded history, break down civilizations, ancient past and forward, and has damn near perfect recall memory. I always tell people when you look at Billy Carson, don't just listen to what he's saying. Look at who he became. This is a black man, but they try to make it seem like this is an outlier. No, this is the normal. This is the culture. 
And if anybody got a problem, tell them to come see me. <laughs> but I'm slapping folks. <laughs> so the next brother I want to bring out is a brother who from one of the same hometowns as me, St. Louis. I come from Oakland. And he's a brother that brought himself out the streets so that he can elevate the people. Y'all make some noise for y'all kill awakening. Y'all ready to learn something? Y'all ready to take this practical knowledge and go do something? What y'all gonna leave with today is something that you can take with you and apply it and get results. We just ain't up here talking spookism and talking about this and talking about that. We finna give y'all some real life transformation type of situations, all right? So y'all ready? All right, let's do it. Do it. Do it. All right, so let's start this off with help. Huh? Because what I've been noticing is a lot of us are sick. I mean, we ill, spiritually, mentally, and financially sick. And I deem this as a health crisis, right? During COVID-19, they looked at the disparities in black health and they kept propagating that. But at the same time, they was telling you, you go get a vaccine at Krispy Kremes. Yeah. So when I look at the way that black men are thinking and operating and moving and black women, if we're sick right now, where do we start at the root? Because I've been studying a lot about being in nature. There's a concept called Yoku Shinrin. And in the 1980s, the Japanese government would take people out into the forest because there was such a big mental health issue crisis that was going on. And they would have you spend two days in the forest. And what it showed is it decreased cortisol levels by 50% and increased cancer killing cells in your body. So this was their way of practicing holistic methods and medicine to heal their people. If we are people that is sick at the root, where do we start? Well, what you mentioned in this card, uh, nature deficiency order. And it just shows us as a biological people here from this earth, uh, being around trees, being around running water, uh, seeing the color green, which is chlorophyll. All of these things come with frequencies. And what these things does is it actually relaxes and it brings on something called the parasympathetic nervous system. So the sympathetic nervous system is what brings on cortisol, it what brings on adrenaline. These are all what they call your fear, fight, or flight chemistry and hormones throughout outside the body that roam around in the body. Well, when you're in nature, what nature does is it brings on serotonin, it brings on melatonin, it brings on oxytocin, dopamine. These are your happy chemicals and your happy hormone. But uh, to answer the question, I think the first place we should start with health is uh, with our mindset, with the environment, and knowing who we are biologically. Uh, we have been taught that everybody in this room is made and comprised of the same things, and we're not. Now, of course, we all share amino acids, we all share minerals and things like that, but depending on who you were created by, and I'm pretty sure Billy would get into this, we got different type of markers and different genetic codes that was mixed in us differently. So since black people are more mineral dense than any other, per any other people on planet Earth, that means we require more minerals. It's a fact. You can actually, if for a dead body, if a, some, if a body died and it got burnt and they came to the corpse and they didn't know what the corpse was, what they would do is they had checked the bones of that body and they had checked the teeth. Well, based off the mineral comp composition and the mineral density of, the, of those skeleton structures, they can tell you whether it was Caucasian, whether it was so-called African-American or not. So I think the first step to health is everybody is not treated the same way when we sick. Everybody can't eat the same foods. Everybody got different blood types. Everybody got different uh, anatomy and physiology. So I think understanding who we is as a people, that's when we can truly, truly tap into our health. Like you, you came out here talking about culture. We're in a European culture and mindset. So we're eating European foods. We're learning European histories. We follow a European God and we done got out of our, basically we got out of our indigenous mindset. So once we get back into our mindset, then that's when we can really find help. Yeah. Thank you. And, and Billy Carson, can you go at it from a, a DNA perspective? Yeah. Well, when we analyze the DNA, predominantly even of African-Americans, just like you said, Yaki, we see there's a lot of uh, significant differences between us and a lot of other races of people. It's just a scientific fact. Facts. As a matter of fact, when you look into the genetics of black people and you look at these scientific studies that come out, they're not based on black people. Facts. The scientific studies are based on middle-aged Caucasian Europeans. And then the doctor's going to prescribe you medication and pharmaceuticals based on a middle-aged uh, middle European, but you're a, a black person. 
right? A, a, a various different ages. So those things typically don't apply to you. Understanding that we have specific genes that can be activated, some are deactivated, and just like Yaki said, we're not like anyone else. Even going out in the sun, we need more sunlight than the average person. Thanks. Because what happens is when the sun comes down and reflects on our skin, the way our DNA is set up and the way our melanin is set up, it actually spreads out the heat, uh, the light, the phot photons as heat. So we need to get more vitamin D. And the only way to do that is to stay in the sun longer. Expose yourself to more sunlight so your body can absorb more of that energy because we actually can alchemically convert that energy. Uh, and also, of course, understanding that our environment. Yes. So when you go out and finally find a way to get healthy, you have to go get a blood sample done, a blood panel, stool sample, and a saliva sample. Nice. That's going to give you a full picture of exactly where you are health-wise. And then you take that and you sit down and you analyze that along with the nutritionist and create something specifically just for you. Because like Yaki said, every single person is different. Some things I can't eat. There are things. I can't eat spinach or kale because the oxalates and the lectins are going to give me leaky gut. I've already experienced that. I'm on my health journey back. And understanding that we all have DNA, and some of it is called junk DNA. But this junk DNA, it's not junk. They're just finding out that a lot of it has purpose. A lot of it is connected, and a lot of it is actually feeding into your system. So you want to be able to do things like clean up your environment because there's so many things around us that's destroying our DNA. And junk DNA is wordplay. What they try to do is get you to add that word junk thinking it's useless, it's worthless, it has nothing to do with anything. But it's one of our biggest powers. And I believe that we have a lot of that power within us, but we've been tricked into thinking we can't access it. And how they trick us, not only by media, but they also trick us by the, by the environment. We're talking about... Um, microplastics which are everywhere they yes. find a microplastics in our testicles now yes microplastics is outrageous we have to start cleaning up our environment understanding what we're eating what we're drinking where we're going to eat what kind of oils are they using where we're going to right. eat all those things are damaging our dna damaging our genetics activating genes that bring on dis-ease which leads to disease and then you'll end up pushing up daisies so we have to understand that and realize that in ancient times it was a much different system. And the way that things were laid out for us initially, it was based on the genetic makeup of the human body. Thanks. And they were feeding people based on that in different regions of the planet. No matter where you were indigenously, your surroundings provided everything your body needed. And now, like you said, more European. So we have to keep that in mind. And we have to find out who we are and know more about our bodies than the doctors and it's because ways the to doctors do that have too. a practice and there's ways to do that billy so what we do at my clinic i got two clinics in st louis missouri uh, we do exactly what you say make some noise for that oh, praise it. so we also got a, a a fully accredited laboratory in houston texas that's where we send all of our blood off and genes off to do gene testing and to do blood analysis uh what we notice is if you know about amino acids raise your hand amino acids y'all see that they teach y'all that in school have anybody heard of a carboxylic acid? Carboxylic acid. See, you see, there's only a few hands. So even when you get into the structure of amino acid and carboxylic acids, we are more prone to have more carbon acids or carboxylic acids in our bodies than European, which have amino acids. Then you break these down into their subgroups and you look at amino acids. It's built off of nitrogen. It's built off of ammonia and it's built off of sulfur. These are your three main key ingredients that makes up a European. But when you look at it in ours, ours is selenium, ours is copper, ours is melanin and carbon. So, so say if I do a genetic test on you and I get a comp genetic test on you based off the genetics you are missing, I know whether you're not getting serotonin or not. I know why your genes are not being turned on based off of who you are, your molecular structure. So what we do at our clinic is if you come into my clinic, we give you a genetic test and we give you a full blood and comprehensive uh, panel. And based off of that and who you are and your physiology, I know exactly what to put back into your body. Billy mentioned something very interesting. He was talking about vitamin D3 and he was talking about how all of their blood work and all of their testing and their pharmaceuticals is built off of the standard of a 40 year old white man. So if you send a 14 year old African-American to the clinic right now or to the emergency room, all of their standards and t uh, statistics is based off a 40 year old Caucasian male. How can they help out this 14 year old black girl? 
So we have to start approaching health and wellness as individuals. We get, and that's the only way we can get healed and get help. And you was talking about the carbon, uh, you was talking about vitamin D. They don't even have the machines to even measure our vitamin D correctly. And Europeans, they measure the, the vitamin D uh, three inside their bloodstream. Our sun does something different. We go through something called biophotomodulation, meaning when the longer we sit in the sun, we have a way of dispersing the energy of the sun. And it don't only go in our bloodstream, but it goes deep into the middle of our cells. And they don't even have technology to measure that yet. That's why at least 80 percent of y'all so-called black people in this room right now is vitamin D3 deficient. But in fact, you're not really vitamin D3 deficient. They just don't have the right technology to test yours. So this is what we talking about when we're talking about culture. The, the word culture means to cultivate. Cultivate comes from cultivation. This is former talk. This is permaculture and agriculture talk. This means to grow something. So bringing this from a health standpoint, if we know that there's not no technology out here that's really able to test our vitals, if we know that the blood work is based off of a 40-year-old Caucasian, then shouldn't we change the blood work panel to fit us? Shouldn't we create technologies and get together and figure out how to create the utensils and tools to really measure our vitamin D3? I'm asking y'all a question. Talk back to us. So this, this is what Keys and Billy is talking about. Culture, really taking a bull by the horns and creating things for our situation and our needs. And I'm going to give it right back to you. I just want to do a quote. This came from John Henry Clark and Dr. Amos Wilson. He said, the point and purpose of a culture is to meet the needs of a people and to solve the problems of a people. So if it's not meeting our needs and it's not solving our problem, then we can't call it culture. Talk to him. So I, a lot of you all heard of identity politics, right? Right? But what we talking about is biopolitics because we're not really getting to the deep and the root of things. And at the core root, is what it means to be radical. So somebody may say you radical because you get into the root of the problem. And everything we're addressing is at the root. As we talk about sun, I often ask people, number one, are you living at your 100%? Now, if I said mentally or physically, let's start physically. Physically, do you have your 100% body? Do you have energy when you awake? Do you reach peak levels of energy? Is your body fit? Can you run a mile? Can you do push-ups, right, throughout the day? Is this the body you would choose if God gave you a choice? Then why is it the body that you choose every day? You choose to maintain the body with the habits that you have so that we can live at a higher frequency, that's the top floor, or the bottom floor. The bottom floor means eat whatever you want to, be inconsistent, do not care whatsoever, and you can stay there rent-free forever. The top floor requires you to change habits, change who you're around, what you do, where you go to. So therefore, it changes the reality that you live. When I started focusing on my 100% physical, I had to think about protecting myself because we talk about being a man. If a man can't protect himself, he cannot protect his woman. So if you have a physically weak and strained body, a biological weak man, then he cannot help his woman. So therefore, he cannot be the man. So then she has to step in place, creating an imbalance within our culture or over the vast society. Yeah. So how many of you all would love to live at your 100 percent self? So as we going through this, I want you to think about yourself and you have to imagine it in your mind. Right. I remember I was watching Creed three and I said, I want to be on Creed four. Mm. So I decided that that was my goal. Next thing you know, I look like Creed five. <laughs> but my 100 percent self said I need to go out there with combat skills. I need to be out there strong. I can't see another man doing stuff that I know only reason he can do it because he challenges himself. Yeah. The mid-interior single leg cortex is the seat of the willpower of the brain. When you do things that you don't want to do, your willfulness grows. Your will to live grows. People always tell you, do what you love, do what you hate. Because the things that we hate to do are the very things that will showcase the love that we have for ourselves and each other. So I decided to share this stage with my brothers because we hate to collaborate. 
We hate to build with one another. These right. brothers have so much wealth of knowledge. But when we are stars, we create a universe. Yeah. The problem is when we try to outshine each other because of this inferior complex, thinking that you need to be more significant than the one you're standing next to, where the focus should be growth. Yeah. Facts. Facts. So, That's a pledge y'all taking to live at your 100% self. Now, I want to get us to an idea about our 100% cosmic age. We're in this age now where we see scientific and technological revolutions. We see a generation going through a spiritual awakening. In the early ages of five years old, they already have an eco-consciousness. They're more worried about the planet Earth than they are about themselves. They don't want to buy new clothes. They want to go thrift shop because it has been a change in the way that they see themselves. They see themselves as part of a grand scheme of things versus just being everything revolving around them. Our generation has been selfish and ego-based where everything revolves around me like we not in the universe. So as we talk about a cosmic age and we talk about this is going to be the culture moving forward, what is the cosmic age philosophy that we should move forward on? So me just, and I'm speaking from Pers a personal standpoint and what helped me out uh, just being a biochemist, being a biology and just being in a laboratory and just looking at cells. Uh, what I looked at in cells and energy, especially when you get into magnetism, everything is like this yeah. pulsing sensation in the universe. It's like the universe have a language of bringing things in and bringing things out, bringing things in and bringing things out. So we're not really even doing nothing new because the, the fathers and the, the daughters of old was doing this before. The knowledge go back and the ancient technology go back a long time. I just think now we're finally catching up to that consciousness and it's renewing itself. There's really nothing new in this universe. It's all in this 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 big old great pool of, of potential, this ether. So I think tapping into oneself uh, is how we get up out of this. Loving ourselves more and wanting to see the brother next to us or the sister next to us doing better than us. That's the way we get up out of this. Literally looking at you and say, dang, Keys, I see you need help here. Let me supply that. You know what I'm saying? If I got an overabundance of wealth and, and I know that you need something, let me step in and help you out. And that's how I used to be. I remember my grandmother used to take care of the whole neighborhood. Anybody can come in her house to eat. Anybody can come sit at her table. She couldn't know you from a can of paint, but she would help you out. And she was the glue that stuck, that stuck my neighborhood together. And it seemed like that we missing that because what she was talking about, that, that insignificant, you know, type of thinking that we're coming in and want to step on each other's th toes. So I think the way about it is, is it's knowledge, information, and the love for oneself and the love for your brother and sister, for real. Yes, sir. And I know that sounds corny, but man, no, it's, it's love. It's, it's real. real. I think the most practical information is the wisest. Yeah. Because it's the one that's easiest for people to absorb and or use. And I think that this generation that's coming is going to teach us more than anything because they already have the wisdom in them, in their actions. They already fight against systems. Yeah. They already do not want to participate in these institutions. Yeah. They already thinking, how do I not waste so much and be productive as a citizen of the cosmos, a citizen of Earth, right? They already teaching us the new way and they are the future. Yeah. Oh, no doubt. The youth is the future, which is why I, I try to tap into the youth as much as I can, because that literally is the future. And when you look at the generation that I came from and some of us came from in here, it's based on competition with no collaboration. Right. It's based on they want to see you do better than them, but not really better than them. Mm -hmm. And that kind of jealousy mindset and that pocket watching has kind of almost destroyed an entire two generations, really. And it's in our epigenetic memories. This is going back to ancient times. It's going back to understanding that scientists have discovered 15 to 20 years of your memories that you're having right now, experiencing in your body is coming through the epigenetics, through the Thanks. RNA of the man going back 15 to 20 generations. And all, all the stuff that happened to us through the turmoil of slavery and everything else is in our bodies. And so that divide and conquer system that was put in place for hundreds of years is still propagating through us till this very day. The fortunate thing for us is the younger generation is beginning to realize, wait a minute, they want to ask questions. Yeah. They say, wait a minute, if you can't answer this question, there's something wrong. How come yeah. you don't want to answer it? The blind faith era is coming to an end. OK, I'm going to tell you that again. The blind faith era is coming to an absolute end. We want answers. We want to know things. And these youth are out here getting answers or looking for them. And it's up to us to become 
the supporters for what they're looking for. But to do that, we got to reprogram ourselves. Because mm -hmm. right now, a lot of us are running on programming code. I call some of us NPCs, non-player characters. And we got to recognize when we need to unlearn and relearn. We need to do a little bit more research and we got to begin to realize that your brother and your sister are your brother and your sister, not your enemy. And if you see somebody doing good, we have to recognize in ourselves and check ourselves, well, I'm feeling a little envious right now. Yeah. I'm feeling a little jealous right now. And then go look in the mirror and talk to yourself and figure out, why am I feeling that? Because technically this person really didn't do anything to me, but I'm feeling some type of way about this person simply because they're achieving things and doing things that I haven't accomplished or maybe that I want to accomplish. But we have to look at ourselves and be honest with ourselves and say, hey, but wait, maybe it's me that's the problem. Maybe I need to go talk to this person and ask them some questions about how they were able to achieve these things and how can I be a part of their, what their, their, their glam up or their glow up or what can I take from them to add to what I'm trying to accomplish in my life. And when we begin to reprogram ourselves that way and realize that we're here to collaborate, not to hate, not to pocket watch, things are going to change for us and we can support the youth even better. Right now, there's three men on the stage. All three of us have slightly different points of views in various topics and various areas, areas of reality or our realities of what the civilization should be, what science is, what aliens are, whatever, right? But guess what? We're sitting up here on the stage together collaborating. And guess what? It's okay. <laughs> yeah. It's okay to not agree 100% with everything somebody has to say. It's called being a human. All right. And but we're showing you right now something that we can do. And if we can do it up here, everybody can do it. Definitely. Collaboration, less competition. And by doing that and reprogramming ourselves, we'll get the youth to see that we got their back and we support them. And then we'll get more out of them for us as well, because they're going to they're going to also help teach us. It's not a one way street. It's vice versa. Right. Right. So. How many people know that we are in the solar cycle 25? Y'all cap, man. They don't know that. They don't know that. <laughs> so solar cycles is where they count and measure the different peak cycles that the sun sends out bursts of energy, right? So I believe it's measured by every 11 years. So we're now in the solar cycle 25. And throughout that, you have low peaks where the sun emits energy and high peaks, right? We're headed right now to a high peak. Now, what scientists have done is they studied this and they've shown that there's a correlation between how societies interact with each other and shifts that happen, events that happen, conflicts, breathing patterns of people, right? When the sun is at higher peaks and you can correlate this with new innovations in technology and women's movements, Right. So at the last highest peak, that was the beginning of the women's movement, Cosmic Cycle 19. But the reason I bring this up is because when I think about local events, people are afraid. People are afraid of the government. They're afraid of Project 25, but they don't know about Cosmic Cycle 25. All of these things are just on time. When we live in this sort of age and if I'm a melanated being, I'm not afraid of the sun. Therefore, I can observe, I can absorb energy through skin conductance. But when you have excess amount of energy, the same way we kill each other in the summer. Why is that? Because we have so much energy, but we don't have nowhere to put it. So we are people that constantly absorbing everything that they give us. And because we're not in connection with the cosmos, we don't even care about things of that nature. We're thinking about possibly sometimes your astrology sign, but only the ones you're attracted to or the ones your ex was so you can stay away. <laughs> but we not really thinking of how we can utilize this information away when they created astrolobes back in the day so they can understand when were the best dates for me to plant, when were the best dates for me to get in relationship, when is the best time for us to create the shift. And what I'm telling you based on my predictions and me studying this, this is the best time for us. This is a time where the, my brother was being here was talking about the people of the sun. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like we are the people of the sun, we supposed to operate differently. I talk about how black men have the worst health disparities on the planet, right? Like we got the number one in violence and disease and all these things. But what we do have, we are the number one health advocates, number one social community advocates, 
We're the biggest growing platform of media, and we're the number one influencers on the planet Earth and number one in entertainment and physicality. The problem is, though, we haven't learned how to take all of this energy, this motion, and organize it. Right? Everybody has these media platforms out here, but we're not sharing information, data, and guests so that we can grow more of these platforms. So that when we look at that top 10 list, I don't see one black American on that. Yet we're the most influential group in America. But if you go look at the audience size, they're going to have a large size of black people who watch their content. That's something wrong. So in this age, we talked about collective reliance. So that means we shift away from independence, the I, the singular opportunity. We always thinking about what is the we in it. And if there's no we in it, then there's no me in it. Yeah. I don't want to be a part of it. My brother said that you have to shift and create opportunity and solutions for the culture. Otherwise, you're not a part of it. Just because you can get on a goddamn beat and rap, that makes you a part of the culture. You a sucker for inviting somebody to the barbecue because they can rap. That don't make no sense. They have to be able to shift. When men come up to me, men come up to him, they come up to him, they say, you help make me a man. Because every father is a baba. Or every man is a baba, meaning father. And a father is somebody who raises you. And we're in that age where we have to be all fathers of the culture. I'm specifically speaking to black men. Because we not who we supposed to be right now. We not operating as universal rulers and guardians and truth tellers. We not operating as high level protectors. Me and my brothers are, but it's just one of us. They always say protect these brothers. Well, who gonna do the protecting if everybody's putting it off to the next? Come on now. No, you supposed to be speaking the truth with me. How you and your corporate seat afraid to speak your mind but say, I believe you, but I can't say it. Well, then fund the revolution. Because when I look at a politician, they get people to organize, fund, and strategize. So how you want a leader that you ain't even voting for? Because we know how to elect presidential leadership. But when it comes to cultural leadership, everybody got to do it by themselves. All black women know when you go vote for Kamala, you're doing it because you believe she is a black woman that's going to represent you. But when you have people that represent the culture, when are you putting your money, going using your media app platform, flying out there to the White House, flying out there to the DNC and the RNC and saying this is the leader that's going to make the change in the world. I'm putting the onus on y'all because we doing our job and I need y'all to stand up as the next generation of leaders. That's the shift. It's not one. It's all of us. When do you feel you're at your highest self? I feel like I'm at my highest self when I've been consistent. All of my personal training, working out, properly, you know, taking care of nutrition, reading and, you know, keeping up with, you know, your own mental growth. Starting my mornings with meditating. When I go on a juice cleanse and I just have all of this energy, also saying my affirmations every day, that's what keeps me going and lifted. I feel like I'm at my highest self when I'm in my flow. And that means doing things from a place of creativity and passion. Make sure that I always journal every day and that I have at least three things that I'm grateful for that have nothing to do with my accomplishments. This is. This is. This is the high level quote. Are we low level or high level? <laughs>I got a question for you. What does your cabinet look like? What is it that you're taking into your routine that's keeping you high level? If it's not our products, then whose products are you taking? And if it's no products, then that's a problem. Y'all seen our commercial for Goldwater, right? You've seen it all over high level conversations. You come to the show, you grab your bottle, people give us the best testimonials on the planet, and we got people on the go. The thing about Goldwater is it's not our only product. We have products like the vitamin C moss. We don't naturally produce vitamin C, so we got to get it in other forms. So therefore, especially during wintertime, we are able to keep that immune system functioning high. And let's say if you just want pure moss, this is just pure moss. I'm talking about the superfood, the best on the planet. And not just from anywhere, because you never know when people actually getting their moss from. I ain't never seen them take a trip to Jamaica. See, we get ours tested right to make sure that you're getting the highest quality pure version of it and you're getting those minerals in an over chemicalized world we got smart moss gold right that smart moss gold is like a viagra for the brain you ever find yourself where your brain feels like it's low you tap one of these and your brain gonna feel high level 
Yeah, and women love a sapiosexual, so when those brains are popping and those ideas are running, you stay tapped in. You gotta make sure you stay safe out here. There's all sort of viruses and diseases that's running around this world, especially during this time. If you're traveling, make sure you spray this on the orifices throughout your body to kill any of those viruses or any of those things trying to invade you. So make sure y'all tap into goldwater.com so next time somebody asks you, what's keeping you high level? What's keeping you young and healthy and wealthy feeling? And now we can take some of that credit for it over here at goldwater.com. Make sure you keep your health journey running. It's a marathon. Peace. Y'all got to skip me. I don't know why I'm talking so passionate. <laughs> yeah, that's how I feel. But I feel like I only get this opportunity once yeah. a year sometime yeah. where y'all sit in them damn seats and listen to something other than nigger rap. Yeah. yeah. But it goes back into what you were saying, though. You know, he was talking about epigenetics. And uh, when you go into, you know, transgenerational epigenetic inheritance, uh, they did this, this uh, science experiments on uh, rats. And what they did was they got rats familiar with the smell of orange and uh, lemon balm scent. So they put them, they hooked them up to these little chains and then they put orange and lemon bond scent in front of them. And they love the smell. They develop a beautiful love for it. They can pick it out and smell it anywhere. So they waited out after a month. Then what they start doing is every time they will smell this orange and lemon bomb smell, they will shock them. Matter of fact, it was orange and cherry blossom. Y'all look it up. It's called the rat experiment with orange and cherry blossom. So every time they smell this smell, they will send an electric shock to their system. Do you know after a few years of doing this, the rat babies that had little mice, they developed some type of sense to avoid that smell altogether, to avoid it altogether. So this just shows you that everything is not passed down genetically. You know, you have things that's passed down spiritually. You have things passed down through minerals, through composition. Everything is just not genetics. So I think if we start really, really cleaning up on that level, like what are you teaching in the household? What God are you following inside your household? Do your God look like you? Even down to the toys that you're letting your children play with. You know what I'm saying? My children are not allowed to play with toys that don't look like them. This is nothing racist, but I don't want them to grow up with an inferiority complex. Their Superman shouldn't look like any other ethnicity. They Superman should look like them. That way, when they see Superman and they see Superman doing all of his uh, supernatural capabilities, they feel like that they can connect with that and lean on that as well. So it's not health is more than about eating right and going to get in the sun, y'all. Yeah. It's about the information that we bring in into our uh -huh. households, y'all. Seriously. Yeah. And we just not doing that. And I'm even sitting up here thinking about this too. What you talking about? If we really gonna come together collectively, you know, you gotta you got a man's that make clothes. Yes, I shouldn't even be sitting up here with nobody else brand yes, on sir. because you got a man that make yes, clothes. Sir, right. I shouldn't even be having these shoes on. Your shoes are custom made. Yes, so I could have seen this is how you know that love is a part of sacrifice. Yeah. I could have sacrificed myself in the clothing that I love that feel good on me just to put money in his brother pocket to keep that dollar circulating amongst us and came right. out here and represented him. Mm. Facts, facts. So this is even a shock culture to myself. Yeah. I want, since you mentioned it, most of the people didn't know, I, I'm starting to do a, a, a partnership with a manufacturing facility out in LA. It's a black man and he owns a manufacturing facility and we putting together this grant. It's a $25,000 grant to where we're going to be doing a making the brand process where people can submit to be a part of this you submit what your brand is, and we will help you build it from the ground up. Now, he took me to one of the facilities, and he told me that I was the first black man that even wanted to step in here to see the beginning root process mm. of a T-shirt being yarned, right? Before it becomes a shirt, we put our influence, then we can increase the, the price of it, and we pay 3000 for it. It's an Iranian gentleman. He said, man, we love y'all. Because they've been doing this for generations and none of y'all want to do this. Wow. Y'all been feeding his family for generations with your influence. When you wear it and you stun on your own people and be like, look, uh -huh, you ain't got this. <laughs> All you're doing is making their family richer. How come you're interested in this business? Because I wear it. Oh, good. Yeah, um, and a lot of my people, we consume so much of it, but we're not good. in the manufacturing of it and not yes. really in the understanding yes, of it. That's a very good idea to get into it. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, I mean, if you have the means for it, yes, definitely. Sir. Uh, we we, we teach idea. a lot of economics and financial literacy, but now it's more so investing into the supply yes. chain. The only way I think a population can grow 
is by getting into a business, become a business, not be a, working for the other yes, people. Yeah. We call it uh, a prosumer, produce what you consume. Yes. Right now we just consume what everybody produces. You know, uh, maybe one thing I'd like to say is a little bit uh, offending to you, but when I go Skull. to the places which is black, I see most of the businesses run by other than black, which is mm. not good. Yes, sir. Should be run by black. Black people should be more of a business people. Yes, sir. Yes. And unfortunately, I mean, maybe they haven't learned. And I'm glad you have that sense in you. Mm. I mean, very well, good. Well, uh, we've been there, but not as something that we see as our culture. We see entertainment as our culture more yes. than production. Yes. So the shift is not just influence what people wear, but produce it. Yes. So as a consumer, right, we got that down pat. Yes. But like you said, it's not enough to just say, okay, it's black owned, but you don't actually create jobs because no, exactly. that doesn't stimulate your people. So exactly. now when you see problems of poverty and violence and criminality, that can be solved by who you hire. People talk about they don't, they don't want immigrants taking their jobs. Immigrants already got your job. They produce everything you buy. Yeah. America imported $546 billion worth of goods from China. Right? There's over 2 billion shoes made. Less than 1% of them are made in the U.S. Um, not just black people are consumers. America is a consumption factory. Yeah. We just eat. That's why we're the most gluttonous and greediest and biggest people on the planet Earth. So when I say prosumer, it means produce what you consume. Yeah. Produce what you consume. We want to talk about reparations? They exist in our habits. Exactly. All we have to do is change the way we do business. Yeah. So you can get fly because we ain't going to never stop getting fly. I already know that. I, before I try to teach you to stop buying clothes and get fly, I'd rather just make the clothes. So therefore, when I get the profit, I'm going to build up the mental wealth or the mental health institute that helps your brother when he outside crazy. Right, yeah. right. Listen, that's beautiful. What 19 Keys and Yaki are saying is so important. We have to be, take the mindset that we're going to become solutions providers or be a part of the solution. I didn't like what was on TV. I created my own TV network, Forbidden yep. Knowledge TV. I got yep. apps on all the platforms. Yep. I didn't like what was on the radio. I got into music production and started creating music. I have over 340 songs in global distribution. Talk your talk, Billy. Rolls Royce playing my stuff. Billy on that Billy talk. Atlanta Housewives is playing my stuff. Documentaries, movies. I'm making more money than rappers, and I don't talk have to go to no him, club. Man. <laughs> yeah. Talk to him, Billy. You know, I wanted to become an author. I created my own book publishing company. Mm. Now I like about book deals. Yeah. But you see, it's all about realizing why I go get a book deal from this company that's only going to give me 5% every quarter and steal all my profits when I can become my own company and, and make the profits. And I can offer people an opportunity to make money exactly. just like I'm making money. I'm not going to be the greedy one. I'm going to give them an opportunity to say, look, we're going to split this 50-50 right down the middle. It's a standard contract, 50-50, not 90-10. But again, it's the minds that are realizing we have to be part of the solution, and we also have to realize abundance is our birthright. Yes, sir. When you recognize abundance is your birthright, you're not afraid to share. You're not afraid to buy his clothes. I'm not afraid to buy your clothes. You're not afraid to sign up for the Forbidden Knowledge TV Network. I published in my next book with Billy Carson. Come Me on, too. let's go. Me too. Let's go. Me too. Facts. But that, again, unlearn, relearn, and understanding that abundance is our birthright and if that's the case all my needs are going to be met and the more you collaborate and the more you become a solutions provider the more you attract money the more you attract revenue the more you attract more collaborations you don't chase the money money is a side effect of an energy exchange exactly the secret to making money is you find a need and you feel that need so you discover what your passion is when you find out what is your passion you find a need for that passion That's in the true. world. When you provide or exchange that passion for other people in the world who need it, money is a side effect that shows up in your bank account. Forget about the money. Follow your passion, become a solutions provider, and believe in abundance. Well, what you're saying is very, very powerful. So he, he just said what I just came out here and said, what, what John, uh, Dr. John Henry Clark said and Dr. Amos Wilson. The whole purpose of a culture is to cultivate. It is solving problem and meeting the needs of a people. What is the problem in America and what is the problem with the black community in America? High disease rate. 
What is causing disease? It's the food because we're eating like another people and we're out of our indigenous mindset. So we need to start teaching people how to eat correctly for their biology. What is the next thing? It's the high incarceration rates. Why are people going to jail? Because they feel they got to rob, steal and sell drugs to actually make a living for their family. So we need to create funding programs and create businesses to offer our brothers and sisters jobs. Mm. You see that? So that's the whole thing we sitting here trying to say today. For us to revamp or recreate the culture, we have to figure out the problems that's going on in the community. And then we need to actually teach the education to actually solve those problems. Our issue is we don't have the skills to solve the problems that's in the community because we too busy solving everybody else's problem but us. Mm. Think about that. Uh oh. How, how many doctors and how many lawyers are you sending to school that ain't even of your own? ethnicity mm. and then you go you get sick and you go to the doctor and they don't have nothing to tell you because you don't even have a fund with a billion dollars to even study your molecular biology to even study what your melanin do in your body to even study how your vitamin d3 work to even study about car, uh, carboxylic acid see that we study in amino acids all of the funds that we are funding everybody else is going to better them and their generation of wealth and none of the money is staying in our community so we can't benefit from a piece of it and that's all we're trying to say so if our culture is dismantled if our culture is not functioning right and we're not elevating to expand our consciousness because the whole entire universe is expanding and we're not expanding with it in a good way then we need to stop and look at the culture and say what's stopping us from growing all right, now we didn't identify the problem. Now it's time to educate ourselves on the solutions and then put people in positions to help solve those problems. Now, guess what we just did? We just cultivated. That's called coaching. Facts. Mm. I know y'all wanted to hear about food yeah. and, you know, vegan burgers. Yeah. And I know what they wanted to hear. We ain't, listen, we only got an hour and 15, so yeah. we got to give you the high level, right? But we definitely will be back together. And when we do, I would love to have Billy do his own presentation. You do your own Let's presentation. Do I do mine to where the people can get properly fed. Yeah. But I want to talk about while we got some time left. As we talk about culture and we talk about the shifts happening. I want to talk a little bit about a spiritual awakening. Because I think a lot of us, we deny that we're very spiritual people. If I ask people, they can't even define it, number one. I'm spiritual. What does that mean? I don't know. I thought that was enough. <laughs> Spirit is breath, number one. Nice. Key, chi, energy. It's to breathe. If we are people of melanin and we have skin conductors that creates electricity that then operates within a certain rhythm, so therefore this is why we have rhythm in our breathing and why we move, the way we say things. The way we walk, the way we talk, everything is operated because we drip everything in our spirit. But to have a spiritual ascension, right, to where we're not just utilizing our spirit to influence the world, but it doesn't come back to us. We then have to then turn spirit into matter. We have to materialize things. So we have to say in order to be industrious, organizations only fear organization. And we're not an organized people. We're going to be yelling at the world asking them to do for us what we can do for ourselves so as a people that materialize you say that, okay if you a man what is your expertise this is the age of masters we have you just had x on this stage talking about technology and ai i don't need just a person with information and smarts i got a machine for that do what humans can do that means i need you to be creative i need you to be an independent thinker i need you to know how to organize in abstract ways this is a time where the world is dependent upon us because creativity is lost. 80% of the internet is just regurgitated information. Facts. There's no color in the world right now. Facts. And black people sleep at the wheel in the greatest time for us to be creatively expressing ourselves, putting infrastructure behind it so that everybody floods over here to us. So are we ready to wake up? Yeah. It don't sound like it. Come on. We ready to wake up? Yeah. My brother, can you give us a breakdown about a spiritual awakening, right, from a cellular level, right? I heard you talking about light bodies and electrical yeah. bodies and a fascia of the body. Can we get into that a little bit? Yeah. I know you do a, a three-hour breakdown. I'm going to break it down in five minutes, man. Yes, Two sir. Minutes. Yes, sir. But no, uh, you know, some of it, people call it the kundalini rising, the rising of the prama, the spirit. We all got it in us, the raising of the crystals, and it's basically taking 
breath and using breath in a way I call it conscious breathing. You can do this just by consciously breathing because we know that 80 percent of the so-called African-American is even breathing incorrectly. Not only do we not uh, not only do we not know how to breathe correctly, we also ingest and digest our food incorrectly, too. We don't even super chew our food. But back to the breath. He said that spirit means breath. So when you look at spirituality or mastering spirituality, that is one that who know how to master their breath. If you can breathe the correct way, which is breathing in through your nasal passage and exhaling through your mouth or your nasal passage, you're actually using something called the diaphragmatic muscle to breathe. Well, right behind this diaphragmatic muscle is something called the cisternal, the uh, cisternal uh, chyle. And this is a big old lymph node that actually detoxify the body and kick on a hormone called glutathione, which detoxifies and open up what you would call NRF2 pathways or metabolic pathways of the body this is how you detoxify you are already spiritually wired to be spiritual and to expand in spirituality what's stopping you from rising in your spirituality is that you need to detoxify your body of all the toxins and pollutants from the environment and from the information and from the wi-fi and from all the emf frequencies that they are permeating in your body i'm talking about trillions of them every second of the day so if you detoxify naturally and you start eating the right foods and you start getting the right breath and you start stretching, how many people know that stretching actually unlock memories? Because you can get memories and different types of hormones and stuff caught up in your hips. How many men can't even do, how many men can't even stretch their hips properly? And you start seeing all of these hip mobility exercises. You start seeing all these stretching, stretching out the fascia, which is another nervous system that ain't nobody talking about. You see what I'm saying? So just by getting into what the elders used to do, which is breathing, fasting, intermittent fasting, eating one time a day, eating your fruits and your vegetables, getting out in the sun, going back to nature, which is what we was talking about in the beginning is what will give you your spiritual awakening. You are already a spiritual being. You cannot separate the spirit from the body. There's no such thing as that. If you go, if you astro travel right now, you're in an astro body. Come on. If you dreaming right now, you're still in a body. Take so them, any man. dimension of density you go to, there's a body to match that dimension to hold your consciousness. So you are already spiritual. What's stopping you from experiencing that is what you're experiencing in your environment, which is polluting your tissues and your blood. And we know that life or oxygen or spirit is in what? The blood. So look, get on some blood cleansers. Get in nature. Drink more water, hydrate yourself, eat more foods that's grown from nature, get away from the ultra, the, uh, the ultra processed foods and you will see your spiritual awakening. Just by changing my diet, y'all, I used to be a gangbanger. I got tattoos on my face. I got gunshot wounds. I got stab wounds. I done been through the worst of the worst. I'm from one of the worstest cities in America, St. Louis, Missouri. Mm. I'm a doctor now with my own clinic. Come on, make some noise. Come on. And I'm not doing this to showboat. I'm just saying, if I can do it coming where I come from with the track record I got, all of y'all can do it. But guess what was my change? My change was changing my environment, changing my food, changing my water source, and changing the way that I think about my brothers and sisters. Uh, Serious. Before you go, because yeah. he mentioned blood. So on our last episode of High Level Conversations, a number one show in the world, we was talking about the bloodline of the gods. Yeah. And we talked uh, deep into like the ascendants and the descendants and the protocols mm -hmm. to creating the future. Yeah. And one of those protocols was through the babies. Mm -hmm. So that if you get a woman who has knowledge, information, and cultivated virtues, and I'm a man with knowledge, information, consciousness, cultivated virtues, then each one of us is going to give half ourselves to that child. Mm -hmm. So if I want to then control a thousand years into the future, it has to be an intentful process, mm -hmm. right? To saying that it's not just about love. Yeah. I know everybody loves the movies, right? And the Disney fairy tale endings, but it has to be intentional because mm -hmm. the way they control time is by putting secrets into the blood. Right. And the word Anunnaki means bloodline of the gods. So when you hear it, you should think of yourself, but to activate it, you have to go into yourselves. Yeah. You have to go into yourselves. You have to begin to realize that all of us here, we're all gods, gods and goddesses. It's an absolute Are y'all believe that? Y'all got 19 keys on the stage. Y'all ain't going to go for that. You we all believe. gods. And that's no offense to what you believe, but we telling you to believe in yourself. Believe in yourself. Listen, the Bible say ye are gods. Psalms 82 and 6. Hey, so I'm going to believe that. And I think the biggest problem we have with this spiritual ascension is the fact that 
a lot of us have been sold a big lie. The lie is you have to die so that you can live. Mm. While you're taught to die to live, they're all already living now. Mm. They're living now. And I intend to live now. And then I, after this corporeal body passes away, yes, I'm going to live again. Because we're already eternal. I think the biggest secret is people think they have to beg to be eternal. Every single one of us has an eternal spirit inhabiting our avatar bodies right now, this Thanks. second. We're already eternal. If you want to understand how to get to higher levels of consciousness, the first thing you have to do is learn how to forgive yourself. This is something that people struggle with. It's not begging, hoping, and wishing for an outside source to come and forgive you, but going in the mirror and having a conversation with yourself and recognizing things that you've done and how it happened and what created the situation and how you got out of it or, if you, or how you're dealing with it and learning how to not duplicate that problem again. Now what's happened when you get to that point of the conversation with yourself and that point of application in your life, you've now been born again in the spirit. And you'll be born again many times in one lifetime because you're going to continue to grow and develop and learn. And you'll look back and see, man, I used to be here, just like Brother Yaki was saying. But now I'm here because you keep understanding how to grow from past mistakes and never repeat those again and develop yourself to a higher level and understanding that we are part of the divine. God is inside of every single one of us. And yes, I do believe in a God. Just because I talk about aliens don't mean I don't believe in God. <laughs> I've said this a thousand times, but people, they never hear me say that. They hear what they want to hear. They hear what they want to hear. Even in the Sumerian tablets, they called it the creator of all. So even they knew they weren't gods in terms of the creator of the universe as a whole. But when I say we're all gods, I can't snap my fingers and create a planet, but I have a certain level of control over my own reality. So that means I'm a fractal of the God as a whole. That means that the power of the divine spark that created everything in the known universe is inside of my body, giving me the ability to create things myself. Every, but every single one of us here has manifested reality. I have a microphone in my hand. This microphone was created by a conscious thought. Somebody thought about this microphone in the original platform called the multi-dimensional platform. Our brains connect to 11 dimensions. Talk to peer-reviewed science. Talk to them. I've been saying this for over a decade. People laughed at it. Now it's peer-reviewed science. Three years ago, the Brain Institute has now uh, quantified this. So the, 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 this platform up here is where thoughts begin. A person said, Let me, I'd like to have a, a device that people can talk into that can magnify a voice. Now it's in a multidimensional state of being. But then that person collapses it into two dimensions by drawing it on a piece of paper. 2D, connecting the lines. Nowadays, we take it and put it into a computer, which is CAD, Computer Assisted Design. It looks 3D, but it's only 2D. Now, once we get exactly the way we want it to shape ergonomically and look and feel and the power that it can have and how it can magnify somebody's voice, then we're going to take those specifications and give them to an engineer. The engineer is going to take those specs and manifest a three-dimensional object that can move around on the XYZ axis in space-time. And I'm holding this microphone right now, created from conscious thoughts. Yeah. They Every single one of us are doing that on a daily basis, and we take it for granted. We have the power of the creator. We are all creators, and we have to understand it and stop taking it for granted. Because if we weren't creators, we wouldn't be sitting on a chair. That's a fact. We wouldn't have on clothes. We be sitting under a tree somewhere butt naked. But this shows you, too, that this comes with a great responsibility. Because since we are creators, that mm -hmm. means that we have an effect and change on reality. And just speaking about what the question that you asked for first, a baby in a sense. You know, what are we laying down with each other for and procreating for? Mm -hmm. Are we just doing this to get our rocks off? Or we are doing this to create civilizations and put our people in positions from a thousand years from now? You know, I was talking to Dr. Layla -Lay -Lay Africa uh, years ago, you know, our rest his soul. Uh, but he was asking, what is the purpose of even having a baby? What's the purpose of it? Do you pray before you have sex? Or are you setting intentions before you go into that woman? Hold it's on, a, run that back for him, my brother. Do you pray before you have sex? Or are you setting intentions before you go into that woman? They ain't clap hard enough, though. <laughs> Do you pray before you have sex? 
Or you setting intentions before you go into that woman. Or y'all mixing toxic seeds. Huh? Is your test, look, is, is your semen even good enough? Is this pure? Or we having toxic sick babies. We get two-year-olds that's coming in with leukemia. We get two-year-olds that's coming in with glioblastoma on a stem brain, on, on, on a stem of their brains. And you asking yourself, where do these things come from? It's coming from the pollutants and the toxins we have in our body because we're not conscious enough before we get into these relationships and we lay down and we have children. Where are you at mentally? I have several children, right? I had children when I was in the street, gang banging, running around, rapping, doing my thing, doing drugs. And then I had children in my awakening. Do you know the personality of my children in both of those times are completely different? Completely different, y'all. Transgenerational epigenetic inheritance. Completely different. So if we're talking about raising a improved species, if we're talking about raising a higher level of thinking, of, of critical thinkers, then that means you have to be that before you impregnate your woman. Your woman has to be that before she get impregnated. See, it's way deeper than what we said. It's, it's deeper than what y'all thinking. It starts even before the womb. Mm -hmm. It starts in the parent's mind. That's right. We got to clean ourselves up. If we're going to really, really guarantee that our generation is going to be free. Look, when my mom makes some noise for that. Seriously, though. When I was in my mother's womb, she was listening to a specific lecture. It's one of the most powerful lectures that you can listen to. And it's by the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. And it's the making of a God. The intention that you put into it, because what my brother said was so powerful, and this is something that affects all of us, right? You take a freeze frame of yourself, you have a baby, and that baby is a representation of who you are at that moment. Then if you become more, you have to then try to teach that baby so they can become like you. Instead, if you focus on clearing out your DNA, clearing out the issues, healing your shadow, right? Going deep within and doing that work. Then you have a baby. They don't have to inherit the issues that you have. Come on. Right? Our willfulness and our discipline comes from our DNA, at least a percentage of it. So that if we are inheriting our parents, that's our first ancestors. We looking directly at them and saying, I'm you. I am our grandparents. So you study your father, you study your mother, right? So therefore you will know what's in you and what's to overcome but you also know what gifts you have. Yes. That's the beauty of it. Yeah. Because you can learn something and then pass it down to that child. They have gifts, skills, and talents. Yes. I learned how to develop my gifts, my ability to speak, my ability to sway, my ability to move on this planet Earth and shift time. That's a gift. That's not something that you just develop. I got that from the womb. And I've been cultivating it ever since. Yeah. So I want us to have a reality where we focus on what are our gifts? Who are our parents? Let's start to do our genealogy. Let's start to do trace root. We used to keep Bibles as a people to where we used to know exactly who our family was. We used to have philosophies that would then govern that family so we knew what that family represented. So whether it was written a thousand years ago or today, that same mind could be in that child. Come on now. And that's how you control time. But we're not equal because we don't even all live the same age. How we equal on this planet if some of us eat right or some of us have health access to health care so they can live longer. And we talk about equality. Equality starts in the womb. You want to get that child an opportunity by you being knowledgeable, by you being right within yourself. So by the time you have that child, they not trying to fight themselves for what you put in them. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Facts. Ser seriously. So so the, the question is, the real question is, why do you want a baby? Why do you want a baby? And you're supposed to want children to pass on your genetic information to live on through the eons and forever. But why do you want that? For you can basically, for you can, the whole thing is to, to make the life, the quality of life supposed to be a high supreme. A lot of us in here are suffering from illnesses. I've been getting ran up on since walking through here. Yaki, I got this going on. Can I get into the clinic? Can I get into the clinic? And we looking at the life expectancy like, dang, brother, you only got about five more years in you. What have you done? in your life, when you leave after five years or your children left good, have you set up a trust fund for them? Do you even have any children? Is your sperm even healthy enough to recreate and, pro and procreate? So the question is, 
How can we reproduce, make it healthy, and what are we giving them? Because the whole point and purpose of man in this reality is to experience creation. God fragmented itself, put it in 7 billion different people for we can experience creation. God said, okay, I don't have a body. Yeah. I want to experience my creation. So I'm going to make 7 billion people and I'm going to break pieces of my consciousness up, put it through all these billions of people for I can experience what I created. How can you experience true creation when you're on your deathbed? When you're suffering from rheumatoid arthritis? When your hands is clamsia? When you have heart failure? When you want dialysis three times a week? You can't even get out of the house. You can you, you see what I'm, do y'all get where I'm going? Facts. So so the whole thing is is to clean up our diets, clean up our environment, clean up our mindset, get out of this rat race, work in these nine to fives, become more entrepreneurs, revamping the culture. So what is your purpose? Who are you? What are you? Why are you? Where are you? These are questions that we need to start sitting in the mirror and looking at ourselves and asking ourselves these questions and not getting up and leaving until we develop an answer. Nice. You, you know where that shift starts? The shift starts with courage. Most of us don't have the courage to make the change we want to make. Courage operates on a certain frequency. When you live below that, you in fear, you anxiety, you in guilt, and you at the bottom when you in shame. In that frequency, you can't produce your own world. So we as a people collectively got to have the courage to walk outside, right, and create a world that represents who we are. To speak a truth, right, from what's in your mind, what's on your heart, and you say what's really on your mind. Not worrying about the paycheck or these people and they politics. They not going to like the fact that I watched Billy or Yaki at 19. That's fear. All of that fear stops you from becoming that higher self. It stops you from being who you really want to be. You don't want to go to that job and listen to the jokes of your boss that ain't funny and got to laugh. You tired of that. <laughs> I know you want to be able to operate this planet Earth with dignity and respect. There's a marathon to that, though. It's a race that you start and it continues to go. And we are in the age of evolution. And that evolution is that we take the ideas of our ancestors and we advance them in modern time with modern science, with modern technology, with the modern mind. We take an ancient wisdom back to modern man. And now we are going to advance the culture saying that we've learned from the past and we're going to move it to the future. Now that we are at the center of technology, but we have to change the image we have within ourselves. If I ask you to close your eyes, the image you have in your mind should not be a reflection of what you see in the mirror. It should be what you're going to become. Come on now. Yeah. So therefore you focus on growth. On therefore you have to learn. Therefore you have to challenge. Therefore you have to manifest. Therefore you have to cleanse yourself. Therefore you have to detox. Therefore you have to each one teach one. Therefore you have to forgive and you have to love and you have to honor and you have to respect each other. That's a different dedication to your next level. That's climbing that mountain and slapping the devil. That's what we're here to do. So part of this whole thing is a demonstration. How do we sit here and cipher? I don't argue with nobody on my platform because we're here to build. Yeah. We bridge connections based on the knowledge that we have to where we can add layers on top of each other because there have been philosophers throughout time that have transcended time. We still use their quotes and their ideas. Mm -hmm. So we now become the philosophers of the world. We have to tell people, I'm a cosmic masculine man. Why? Because the cosmos deal with the perfect order and harmony of all things. It's the divine self. People say they're not religious. Religious is just man's connection to the divine self. It's the way that we explain this reality. So we all have to become more divine in everything that we do. And I know some of you all might not be listening the way you want to right now. But it's going to hit you when you need it. But if you can do it before you need it, then you are in a state of abundance. Stop waiting till you at your lowest to think your highest. Facts. And look, I want to I want to be an example today. Right. So this is my example to show you what change is. I came on here. I'm wearing three different companies on me today. All right. 
Key's got a brother who make clothes. The next time y'all see me on stage, everything is going to be made by him. I'm spending all of my yes, money sir. in the community. All praises, do. It ain't going to be no right. Ricky Martins. I'm spending it with the Europeans. I'm spending it with the Jews. Yes, I'm spending I'm going to spend every la everything y'all going to see on the next time I'm on stage is going to be from my own community. That's me sacrificing and making a change to make sure that I'm keeping the money circulating inside of my community. What y'all going to do? How many of y'all ready to manufacture with us? How many of y'all got brands? Who got a brand? There's a lot of brands out there. If you got a brand, we're opening our doors. You can come to the facilities. You can tour them. And we want to help manufacture your brand. If you want to get in the contest for us to be able to help build your brand and win a $25,000 grant and be a part of our new show called Making the Brand. $35,000. I'm adding $10,000 $35,000 grant. <laughs> come to my booth. You can scan the QR code and we can get it going. But I want to let my brother Billy get a word. I just want to say... It's amazing to see this many people show up to a, a, a conference like this where it's all about gaining knowledge, gaining experience, learning how to look within, becoming self-reliant, and hearing some things that sometimes might be uncomfortable. And even if some of it doesn't apply to you, understanding that I can take that knowledge and I can, uh, I can help somebody else with the, with the information and understanding that we're all here to build together. We're here to grow together. And I want to add another ten thousand dollars to the brother. Come on, man. I want to add go. another ten thousand dollars. There we the go. Brother. All right, make it forty-five thousand. Forty-five thousand. All right, forty-five thousand. Forty-four. 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 44. <laughs> you like the four four for Forbidden Knowledge TV? Make sure you get the app. <laughs> yes, sir. Can I get everybody to stand up? This whole movement has always been about energy. Y'all know we spend hours and countless hours teaching and engaging the people. But it's that energy we want you to stop having stagnant. When you leave here, this is an operation that turns into a movement. We're stepping in. When you step out those doors, you're stepping into a new self. You're saying, I'm now here to advance. When you speak to people, you're a little more kind and less violent. Yeah. I'm sharing the wealth and the information and the knowledge and opportunities. You sitting in these corporate positions, got these ability to fund with your budget and you not being radical? If you ever watched that movie, The Spook Who Sat Beside the Door, mm. it was about a CIA agent, the first black CIA agent. He took all the knowledge, the intel from the CIA, and he brought it to the movement of the streets. But what I'm here to tell you is there's a spook inside you. And you just been waiting to be activated. You didn't know you got in that position for this reason, but you did. I get brothers all the time that tap in with me, say, Keys, I got you. Yeah. They don't need to know it, but that's our job to do. Yeah. That's for us to activate yourself. We ain't no goddamn capitalist crony bums. We gods. And we got to operate like that and have a higher standard for right. ourselves. Are we low level or high level? High level. Are we low level or high level? We high, high level. level. Well, let's act like it then. It's time for us to advance the culture. It's time for us to push it. When they saying, why you listening to Yaki? Why you listening to Billy? Let's go. Because <laughs> you want to tap into that God. You want a better source. Men are the givers. What we, we consume, we then give to the world. But we don't consume anything great. We ain't got nothing to give. Right. We all three of us are still working on healing ourselves. Fact. Right now. We're still working on getting the Damn. trauma and the issues out of our DNA. We're still studying the habits of the leaders of the past and saying, how can I be better to this day? Because none of us are perfect, but we're striving. Yeah. And if we can give each other the same grace that we give to politicians, yeah. then we can understand the reason to giving grace to leadership because they represent something bigger than themselves. And each one of us and each one of you today in your heart and your mind, you know you more than your job. You know you more than your cars, your clothes, or even the person you with. You know that you are a divine source. You know you are the children of the cosmos. You know that you have been through the darkness and you bring it to the light. You know that you are the greatest innovators and inventors on this planet Earth. You know that you have a superiority in the way that you move, the way that you talk, the way that you operate, the way that you think, the way that you calculate, the way that you breathe. If you don't walk with that type of confidence, you're not operating in the universal order of yourself. And I command you to be the man you're supposed to be. And I command you to be the woman. And I command you to be the people that represent God. Who we? Facts.
When do you feel you're at your highest self? I feel like I'm at my highest self when I've been consistent. All of my personal training, working out, properly, you know, taking care of nutrition, reading and, you know, keeping up with, you know, your own mental growth. Starting my mornings with meditating. When I go on a juice cleanse and I just have all of this energy, also saying my affirmations every day, that's what keeps me going and lifted. I feel like I'm at my highest self when I'm in my flow. And that means doing things from a place of creativity and passion. Make sure that I always journal every day and that I have at least three things that I'm grateful for that have nothing to do with my accomplishments. This is. This is. This is the high level club. Are we low level or high level? <laughs>I got a question for you. What does your cabinet look like? What is it that you're taking into your routine that's keeping you high level? If it's not our products, then whose products are you taking? And if it's no products, then that's a problem. Y'all seen our commercials for Goldwater, right? You've seen it all over high level conversations. You come to the show, you grab your bottle, people give us the best testimonials on the planet, and we got people on the go. The thing about Goldwater is it's not our only product. We have products like the vitamin C moss. We don't naturally produce vitamin C, so we gotta get it in other forms. So therefore, especially during winter time, we are able to keep that immune system functioning high. And let's say if you just want pure moss, this is just pure moss. I'm talking about a superfood, the best on the planet. And not just from anywhere, because you never know when people actually getting their moss from. I ain't never seen them take a trip to Jamaica. See, we get ours tested right, to make sure that you're getting the highest quality, pure version of it, and you're getting those minerals in an over-chemicalized world. We got Smart Moss Gold, right? That Smart Moss Gold is like a Viagra for the brain. You ever find yourself where your brain feels like it's low? You tap one of these and your brain gonna feel high level. Yeah, and women love a sapiosexual, so when those brains are popping and those ideals are running, you stay tapped in. You gotta make sure you stay safe out here. There's all sort of viruses and diseases that's running around this world, especially during this time. If you're traveling, make sure you spray this on the orifices throughout your body to kill any of those viruses or any of those things trying to invade you. So make sure y'all tap into goldwater.com so next time somebody asks you, what's keeping you high level? What's keeping you young and healthy and wealthy feeling? And now we can take some of that credit for it over here at goldwater.com. Make sure you keep your health journey running. It's a marathon. Peace.